Hi everyone, today I'm going to share with you my experience with this deep cool air cooler known as the AK620 Digital. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Deep Cool to have provided this unit for me to share with you guys and to our local distro Tech Dynamic to done the arrangement on the delivery. Let's begin. When you unbox this package itself, before I unbox, kudos to Deep Cool, they make use of recycled cardboard, which is environmental friendly. And what's inside this box? The air cooler itself, which is protected by these forms over here. The whole unit, in fact, is stealth black. And this, I believe, is the accessory package. You'll be provided with the instruction manual where it tells you all the uh, parts, like how to mount the uh, 1700 bracket or the AMD brackets. An Allen Phillips screw or screwdriver. Fan splitter, which I believe is meant for your two fans on the cooler itself a deep cool thermal paste which I believe this is 8 gram or 4 gram these are all the mounting brackets the back plate that needed for your Intel platform and your AMD platform now all these are packed nicely in ziplock bags just happen that I will open it up and show you in depth starting off with the Intel section where you see all these small screw or should I say standoff these are meant for your 2011 and 2066 socket and when you're using this right you won't be needing the back plate if you are using 1150x 1200 or the 1700 socket you'll be needing this back plate and these are all the standoffs and speaking of which right the back plate itself I noticed that Deepco have improved this back plate a lot it's lost much more sturdy as I switch the screws itself and the whole thing is black. Now if you were to push these screws out, this is meant for your 1700 socket. If you push it in, this is meant for your 1150X or the 1200 socket. And again these are the Intel brackets whereby you mount on the other side when you place the back plate and to do this stand also over here you'll be mounting this to it i'll show you later how it's been mounted now for this right these are secure screws for your brackets be it your intel or your amd now these are the amd platform where you have the standoff and it support AM4 and AM5. The measurement of the air cooler from here to here is at 138 millimeter. From the top all the way to the cold plate is at 162. And the width for this from here to here is at 129 millimeter. This is a dual tower air cooler where it has two array of fin stack which is in black and at the front there are some patterns on the fin stack where you can see indent and protruding out square blocks. There are a total of six heat pipe and at the top this whole piece over here in fact is a cover or a panel which is made of alkylate and this will display the digital number of your CPU temperature. Of course you will need an application in order for you to display the temperature. And at each side of this panel, here and here, these are the ARGB strips. And at the bottom where it shows you the cold plate, the surface area of this cold plate is 52 by 42 and the material of the cold plate is nickel plated 
not copper, very shiny. There are a total of four cable connectors, which this two on my right, these are the four pin PWM fan connectors, which is meant for your fans. And this two, one is ARGB, three pin five volt, and the other one, which is a USB 2.0 header, or should I say plug. Now the fans itself are uh, hold on to the uh, fins with this clip. So in order for you to remove, you can just pull it and you'll be out. Now both of these fans are FK120 fans and they have a drawing ampere of 0 0.12 and both are 12 volt DC. Now the RPM itself at lowest is 500 RPM and a max RPM of 1850. As mentioned to you, the top panel you're able to remove. See, this is magnetic. But when you're removing this right, do take note on the cables that's channeled over here, which I showed you earlier, which is this two, the USB and the ARGB connector. So you will need to remove this off if you want to remove the whole panel. And it's being catched by this catch over here. So you have to do it gently. So once this is removed off, you can just remove the whole panel. And this will allow you to reach out to your fans, the internal fans. Now, why am I removing all this? Because you will need to do this in order for you to fasten the whole hissing onto your motherboard where your processor is. I will first start off with the Intel mounting where you make use of this bracket. Now, it happened that this is actually a 1700 socket. So you need to push all these screws out. Once you have done this right, flip over your motherboard and to place your back plate. Now having the Intel facing you and the screws pointing down, then you place it nicely to the holes. Once you've done this right, flip the motherboard over, still holding the back plate. Then over here you have four screw points where you first place the standoffs. These are the standoffs. Now take your time to screw. Make sure that you're doing it diagonally. Especially for this end here, please be very careful because there are caps over here. So once this is done right, just high, I mean just hand tighten will do. Then next we'll be mounting the Intel bracket. Now for Intel bracket, take note that there are arrow sign over here pointing towards your CPU. So you should be mounting this way where the arrows are pointing to the processor. So you can align this. And once you're done, right, make use of this fasten screw. Now, I mean bolt. Now, take note that all this bolt, right, the other end is flat. And one end is with the Phillips screw head. So face the Phillips screw head at the top and you fasten them. Once there's some tension, right, hand tighten, make use of the Allen screwdriver, then you tighten them. Now, don't have to be very tight. Just enough to hold the bracket. So once this is done right, 
For the heatsink itself, make sure you dismantle the fan and the top panel. Then you mount on it. And you can mount either direction because the uh, I mean the arrange I mean the alignment right is both of the same. So place it down whereby this end over here right will screw to this and this end over here will screw to this. So when you align this in right, I'm not gonna fasten it because there's no processor. So once it's aligned, take this to screw on this to the standoff over here. So this is how the Intel is being done. And when you're applying this right, make sure you remove off this first, apply thermal paste, then you fit it in. Once your whole heatsink is fitted in right, you'll be able to mount your you'll be able to mount your fans at the center and at the front or maybe to the rear, depends on you. Then put this cover over. The arrangement should be placing the center fan first, place the cover. Okay, it should be the other way. Then tuck this cable where I showed you earlier. Then you place the fan. As for the AM4 and AM5, I'm using an AM5 platform. First thing you need to do is to remove the original brackets. Now I'm going to do one set at a time. As this is mounted on a tray, there is a back plate on this platform. If you to remove all the screws when you're mounting on the PC itself or the tray itself, right? This back plate will drop. So that's why I'm doing one set at a time. Next, you will be needing the standoffs, which is this. Now take note, one is with the screw thread. The other side, which is this. So align this, having the thread facing upwards, screw this in. So once you have all this standoff in, Okay, just hand tighten. Next will be the brackets. Now do take note again on the bracket, there are arrow sign, which is pointing to the processor. So you should be placing it this way, not this way. All right, so follow the orientation, the arrow sign pointing towards the processor. So right, I'm just gonna put it in. And once this is in, next thing is the mounting board. A gentle reminder, make sure that the Philip screw head is facing upwards and not this way. This is flat. So the flat should be facing at the bottom. So right now you can screw them or in. Then make use of the Allen screwdriver to lightly tighten it. Don't have to be too tight as mentioned. Just ensure that this bracket here hold. Then once this is done right, apply your thermal paste, remove this cover over here, then place your processor in whereby again make use of this screw driver over here right to screw this thread to this thread on the top and at the bottom same thing so just going to show you a short illustration now probably you can't see over here but the sequence I think I'm going to do this assuming you have placed this in Okay, next thing to do, place your fans. So I'll start off with this and depend on the direction. Now this is blowing air towards 
the top and this is drawing air in so make sure that if you are facing this way right the air is pushing out that direction so i will clip this in oh make sure the cable is downwards not upwards And once you have the alignment right, clip it in. Just make sure that this flush. Then next, not applying the fan, all right? The top panel will have to go first. So once you have done this in place, right? Make sure you tuck these cables as mentioned to you. If you don't tuck this cable, in nicely right you can't clip the fan at all so as mentioned to you right at this section over here there is a catch for you to catch the cable so once this is done right then you can clip your fan and when you're clipping the fan at the front which is this way make sure you adjust accordingly to the uh, ramps height so assuming that you have ramps plugged in just an illustration see the front fan would definitely be above the ramps so it depends on how tall your ramps are if it's taller, right, you can move the uh, fence up or down, not an issue. And one thing good about this, right, they design in such a way whereby the fence is not protruding out of the heat sink, I mean the uh, ram section, where you can adjust the fan height. It's a good design. Same goes to the Intel, where you place your ram, right, let's say to the inner side, or, I mean the section on the dim slot over here you can adjust the fan up or down in order for you to clip see assuming that this is done I can just clip and it will not touch your ramps before I show you how the panel display the temperature of your CPU I'd like to talk about the thermal paste itself when I apply this the velocity is pretty full weight and it, it is not thick it's very easy to apply i believe this will yield good result using this thermal paste from deep cool now some of you might notice that how come my thermal paste is square well i have a method to apply the thermal paste and if you are curious to know right just click on my top right hand corner and it will show you how i did this application after you have fit the uh, air cooler on your processor, don't forget to plug the uh, connectors. You have a total of four. So starting off with the fans, which is 4-pin PWN, you can make use of the splitter that comes with the accessory package. Plug the fans to this splitter. And at the other end, plug this to your CPU fan header. Next will be this cable over here, which is the 3-pin 5V ARGB, which is meant for your side of the panel, the ARGBs. So you can plug to any of the 3-pin 5V ARGB header on your motherboard. Once it's done right, the last step you will need to plug, which is the USB cable, which is for your panel. And of course, you will need to do some cable management yourself. So at this end, where is the USB connector, connect this to your USB 2 header of your motherboard. And this is done.
I've illustrated to you how the ARGB effect are on both sides. In fact, you can see the glow behind. So the ARGB is working. And to show you the temperature reading and the load percentage on the panel itself. Now, in order for you to have this on the panel, you will need to install the application. All is needed is to head down to this website, which is the AK620 Digital. Scroll down and you will see a section where you can download stuff over here. So download the digital setup. When you download and install, you will be ushered with this, the icon over here. If you do a right click, you can set to display in Fahrenheit, in Celsius. So right now I'm just going to click on Fahrenheit. So as you can see, this is in Fahrenheit. 195, 193, 195 Fahrenheit. So back to where I was, I will set this back to Celsius. Now besides this, right, you can switch the display only temperature if you choose. So right now I switch to temperature. It will take some time to cycle. See, it's actually showing you the temperature on the panel, which is 80 to 88 to 92 degrees Celsius. Now, why is it so high? Because I'm running Cinebench right now, and it's been like two hours or so. And this is a 7950X AMD processor that runs only on XMP profile. I didn't touch anything else. Just let it run at default. And this cooler is able to cool down my processor. In fact, to hover at 91, 92 degrees Celsius. And mind you, the room temperature right now in Singapore is 30 degrees Celsius, or should I say in my room? So this is the result that I get. Now back to the control itself. You can also set alarm if it goes beyond 90, de 90 degrees. So you have to set this alarm on, right? What you will see is that the uh, temperature will flash. See, it will flash. This is a warning sign to tell you that your processor is hitting 90 degrees Celsius. So this is what it is. And of course, this AMD processor is able to toggle around 90 degrees. I'm okay with it, but not beyond you know, consistently at 100. So this air cooler, in fact, does perform well. You still hover around the 90 degree level. So as you can see over here, the temperature on hardware info, see, and, and I'm running Cinebench. I'm still running. So it's pretty all right to have the temperature this way so long it's not at 100 degrees celsius and i know that this can be quite annoying as it flashes and flashes so what you need to do if you don't want it to flash right this is actually a warning alarm you can just turn the alarm control off and you just stop and it will be consistent this air cooler in my opinion is almost perfect Reason being right, as compared to the original AK620, which is silver on the fin stack, and the structure is not as good as this AK620 digital. Reason being, all is black in color, stealth black, and the structure, as the uh, backplate I've mentioned in this video, they have improved on that. It's very sturdy and all the locking mechanism and such, right, they have improved on it. And best part of all, right, the temperature, though at 90, is still acceptable based on the fact that I make use of their original thermal paste. If I'm going to use my own thermal paste, I believe that the temperature will not be hovering at 92 degrees Celsius. It will be around 88 or 89. As you have to know that in Singapore, the room temperature is 30 degrees Celsius and it's unlike overseas. So you might watch other content whereby this air cooler can bring down the temperature all the way to 86 degrees Celsius and such. But consider the fact 
the region I'm at, it does perform, hovering around 90, 88 to 92 degrees Celsius. Now, besides this, right, there are some stuff that I hope that Deepcool can improve on as the locking mechanism. They are using only two points to the uh, processor. If you have four point, right, it makes the uh, structure more rigid. And especially when you tilt, I mean, it's like when you fit into the case itself, right, the weight balance will be there as a knight to have four point instead of having two point. Also on the digital display, as I show you on my B-roll, there is this light, light littered over here, which is the Deepco logo. They have not done it over those with the ARGB effects and I mean the logo and the ARGB effects all are very nicely done. And a very clear winner as in like the display of the temperature. This is the main thing that you want to see. The digital of the temperature and the load or usage, it's very clear. So the rest, right, to me, it's not really important like the logo or the, you know, the uh, dots over here. The main attraction is I want to see the temperature with which this air cooler delivers. Well, with this, I hope you guys have enjoyed what I've shared with you. Once again, I'd like to thank Deepku to have provided this unit to share with you guys. And if you are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. If you like my content, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Till then, take care. Goodbye. See ya.